Fox News launched overly personalized, false, and incendiary coverage of me, mainstreaming online conspiracy theories to tens of millions of Americans. They lied about my role. Was hired to police domestic social media use, period. Is now the administration's official purveyor of truth. I quickly started receiving violent threats as a result of this coverage. I was weeks away from becoming a mom. Fox didn't seem to mind. They did not mind at all. That was Nina Jankowicz, uh, former disinformation chief uh, under the Biden administration, eventually left the administration uh, in no small part because of all of the chaos that you just saw from Fox News, hyper focusing on her specifically. Uh, to the extent that according to the complaint that she's filed and she is suing Fox, Fox, as you can see in that, over the course of eight months in 2022, they talked about her more than 300 times. That is, granted it's a 24 hour a day news network, that is a level of focus. I'm not even sure if they talked about AOC 300 times uh, in eight months. I don't know if they talked about Hunter, well probably Hunter Biden. But other than that, Hunter Biden and Nina Jankowicz, that is pretty much it in terms of a hyper focus. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more from the lawsuit. It says uh, to bolster its fabricated bullying narrative of Jankowitz, false falsely Fox falsely claimed that Jankowitz intended to censor American speech, was fired from her position with the federal government, and wanted to give verified Twitter users, including herself, the power to edit others' tweets. That is the sort of just utter nonsense that only a person who only watches Fox News could believe. It was the idea that verified people will have power over everyone. Like who could possibly believe that? And when I say that, I don't just mean in the comment section or whatever, who could possibly believe that? What host could plausibly make the case that they believe that that is true? And of course, this is a defamation lawsuit. And so look, the onus is definitely on her, unfortunately, to have to prove that they all knew that what they were spreading was false news, that they knew that they were defaming her. We've just sort of gotten out of a cycle of this with Dominion lawsuit or with Dominion. But um, so it's gonna be difficult for her. But they really did focus on her a lot. I fully believe that she has received a ton of violent threats and all of that, Adrian. What do you make of uh, what you're seeing? You know what, I think that they targeted her for harassment without question. And the thing is, is them being a news outlet, they're probably gonna argue that she is a public figure, which she may quasi, she may qualify as a quasi public figure by virtue of what her position was. But still, you know, they have to show that they lied and also acted maliciously under the standard. I think that that's gonna be difficult for her and that Fox News is going to continue to push and push and push. Um, but I'm sure she is in a favorable court of law in terms of jurisdictional. So I think she could win, but also then it becomes an issue of damages. How much are you gonna be able to show? Because that's what we saw with Dominion voting. The fact that Fox News held out so long is because they're like, yeah, show that you can, you could actually show that you lost whatever billion dollars. And that was something that Dominion voting couldn't necessarily do, which is why it accepted less. And so how much she's gonna be able to show at the end of the day, it's just, it's gonna be clear to me that it may not be worth the fight, but I'm glad she's still fighting. Yeah, and, and the difficult thing too is we've seen in a number of cases, they'll they'll choose to elevate this person that none of these conservatives would otherwise have ever heard about. They will hyper focus on them, they will lie about them, they will dispatch their goons. And then Fox will move on, but the goons don't. Like there have been independent journalists that have been attacked by Fox that Fox doesn't talk about anymore, but they still get docs to this day. The crazies that are unleashed on them, become utterly obsessed. And so the damage doesn't go away just when the coverage goes away. I mean, let alone the damage to your career, like you've had to move on from the White House and all that. But even the stalking and the death threats and the fear of harassment to you, to your family members, to your loved ones still continues. It, it doesn't mean that you know it shouldn't be difficult to prove or whatever. And it certainly will be difficult to prove, but you have to, you have to feel for the people who are you know unjustly focused on in this way. No, absolutely, and the mental health aspects of it. People don't talk about that a lot, but once you've been subject to any kind of scandal out in the public world, the thing is nobody prepares you for it and how it just, it really crushes you mentally, the depression, the anxiety, all of it that you get hit with. That's something that can take years off your life. I personally know that myself. And yeah, when you come out of it finally, 
it does put you in a different disposition to where um, you are more resilient in a way. But at the same time, it can take years psychologically to rebound from that. But unfortunately, because our society does not see the true value of having sustained healthy mental health, it's not gonna economically reward that loss of those years trying to overcome uh, what Fox News has really created. Yeah. Yeah, and the fear I think is that like you said, you know, can you hold out? Can you pay to hold out? Like that video that you saw was part of a fundraising thing, and it kind of needs to be because how can you possibly hold out against the legal might and the ability to delay things of Fox and drag it out and all that? Um, it's like a question of how you value getting justice for the abuse that you've already suffered versus the additional abuse that you'll get if you continue with it. So it's very difficult. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.